Well, winter time is upon us. Well, almost upon us anyway, depending on what part of the world you live in. You may get a harsh winter, you may not. But if you get harsh winters and you're wondering what to do about your quail hutch, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. And today we're talking about winterizing your quail hutch. What do you need to do? Honestly, there's not a lot you need to do. Quail are incredibly cold hardy. Now I know some of you guys live in areas of the country where you get much harsher winters than I do. I'm in southwest Missouri. We do get winters that, uh, you know, sometimes we'll get down below zero degrees Fahrenheit for, you know, a couple of weeks on in. But really, our winters here are fairly mild compared to some of you guys that live up north. Now, some of you guys that live maybe in the southern climates or in warmer parts of the world where you don't really get much of a winter, you're probably not worried about your quail too much. But those of you that live in areas where you get very harsh winters, you may worry about what do you need to do to keep your birds warm. And again, you don't really need to do anything. All you really need to do is provide them with some kind of wind block. Now we've talked about this on this channel before, but it is still a comment or a question that comes up quite frequently. And I figured we've got new viewers, we've got new subscribers. It's a good thing to go ahead and cover because it is that time of year. Well, if you live in the United States anyway, it's that time of year. So let me bring you in close. I'll show you what I mean by providing with the wind block. Feathers are really good insulators. So that's really all you need to do. I'll show you how my quail hutch is set up here. Let me get it all opened up here. All right, this is the section of my quail hutch that is covered, is blocked from the wind. Let me bring you in a little bit close. Hopefully nobody flies out when I move the camera. All right, hopefully you can see in here. And I know you can't see the top, but I've got the top covered with a clear plastic film that blocks any wind or rain from coming in from the top. Um, I've got this sandbox in here with a uh, plywood bottom here, so it's solid on the bottom. No wind comes up from the bottom here. All blocked on the walls, so they can get in there. And honestly, they spend a lot of their time in here, winter or summer. They just kind of like that sandbox and that secluded area right there. So this is the area that I give them that blocks them from the wind, Blocks gives them a, a block from the weather. And it's a little bit chilly out today. It's not terribly cold, probably in the mid 40s, low 40s Fahrenheit. Um, you can see the birds are just fine. They're not showing any signs of stress or anything like that. Let me get this closed up so we can give them a little bit less, uh, give them a little bit of privacy here. Okay, as far as keeping them warm goes, that's really about all you need to do. And again, if you live in a much harsher climate than me, you may be thinking, well, we get well below zero and we stay there for longer periods of time. Well, I've got viewers that live in Alaska that keep quail and have reported back they do the same things I do. Just provide them with a wind block. You don't need to provide them with any heat lamps or any of those kinds of things. They're just fine. They're incredibly cold tolerant. Um, yesterday morning when I came out, it was 28 degrees Fahrenheit, below freezing, and I know that's not really, really cold for some of you guys. I'm not factoring in a wind chill. I'm just saying the temperature itself below freezing. And the birds were out here all frolicking around, having a good time. They really kind of enjoyed the cold front that came through. Same thing with the rabbits, really. You don't need to do anything for them, but provide them with some way to get out of the wind, provide a wind block of some kind, and they're gonna do just fine. They actually do better in winter time than they do in the heat of summer. The heat of summer is a little bit more stressful on them because they can only do so much to cool off. But in the uh, cold of winter time, you know, you'll see them kind of fluff their feathers up sometimes. Um, they huddle together a little bit, but they're still doing just fine. They actually do much, much better with that cold front or the cold weather. All right, the only thing that I do have to do is when it gets below freezing, I have to take down the automatic watering system. There's no way to keep that from freezing. And you could put in, you know, submersible stock tank heaters or any of those kinds of things, and that might keep the water in the bucket from freezing. Um, you could circulate water through the lines to keep the water in the lines from freezing, but you're still going to have a problem with right there at the point where the birds get the water, that valve there, that will freeze. And the problem you have with that freezing, like right now, we're not staying below freezing, you know, all day long. So it may drop below freezing at night and then warm up during the day above freezing. But this whole system, if it freezes up, then that pushes the, uh, the connections apart. Um, it, it causes the valves to break. So the, the, when it does thaw out, all the water leaks out or no water comes out, period, one way or the other. So it really is when I start getting consistently down uh, where we have nights that are going to be below freezing, I have to take the automatic watering system down and I switch over to watering them in containers like this right here. 
Now this is a really, really dirty one. I've got to clean, actually I'll probably just make a new one. They're so cheap and easy to make. But basically it's just a Tupperware style container. I got a couple of holes cut in the side here uh, just for them to be able to stick their head through and drink water. What I like about this is it has a lid on it. So it keeps the birds from getting in the water. If you just put a bowl of water in there, they'll get in it and they'll get wet. And then you may have problems like frostbite or the, the freeze to the cage floors, you know, those kinds of things. Plus they'll foul the water up. They get it all kinds of incredibly dirty. This keeps the water clean. It keeps them out of the water. It keeps them a lot safer because it has a lid. They can't get inside. So go out in the morning. I fill it up about oh that level right there. They'll flock to it, get a drink of water. They'll drink as much as they can right at the moment before it freezes. And then I come back out in the evening and fill it up a little bit further. And then they do the same thing. They come to it, they, they flock to it, they drink their water, they drink as much as they need, and they're fine for the rest of the day. The next morning when I come out, if everything's still frozen up, this one goes inside the thaw. I get another one out and I start the process all over again. Fill it up just a little bit, give them you know, a chance to get a drink of water there, and then fill it up the rest of the way in the evening. Bring it out, what I use is, a, is an old milk jug, a, you know, a gallon uh, milk jug that's empty. I just fill it up with water and bring it out to the hutch with me when I do my, uh, do my morning chores. The only other thing I'm going to do is, you know, I've got two uh, hutches of quail here now. Um, I'm going to process all the birds in the other hutch. So I'm just going to be down to these birds right here. There's about a dozen hens in here, so and, and roosters, not a dozen roosters. There's a dozen hens and four roosters or three roosters or something like that. I don't remember, honestly. I'd have to recount them to make sure. But that gives me enough birds to carry through the winter time so when spring comes, I can ramp my production back up and build my flock back up. There's no reason for me to feed out two hutches worth of birds all winter long. Um, you know, a dozen, you know, if I've got 10 uh, hens in here, when they start laying in the spring, that's about 10 eggs a day. I can collect eggs for four or five days and quickly get, you know, 50, 60 eggs to incubate and get right back up into production in no time at all. So that's really the only other thing I do for these birds in the wintertime. They do just fine. We've had, um, you know, I think the coldest I've kept them in is we had uh, last winter was pretty mild. The winter before we had a couple of stretches where we got down to like negative temperatures, negative 10, negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for, you know, four or five days at a time. The birds didn't shine, so show any signs of stress with that. They, they, they're just fine. They're, they get out, they walk around, they check out the, you know, everything. They, when it gets real windy, they get back in here in this area right here and hide from the wind, but that's it. They do just fine. And again, my viewers that are in extreme northern climates where it gets very, very cold and stays that way for a prolonged period of time, report back to me the same things, that their quail do just fine in the wintertime as long as they can get out of the wind. That's really all you got to do. So anyway, hopefully this puts your mind at ease if it was something you were concerned about. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, God bless.